is Robin. I have no way of knowing if anybody's on or not because the camera's all the way over there. But um, this is Robin. She is um, due in one week. She's a Blenheim Cavalier, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. She's in what you would call the third trimester of the pregnancy. They have a gestation of nine weeks and She's got one week left, so it's like her being in her ninth month of pregnancy or like eight and a half months pregnant. So when our mama dogs are expecting, we let me move a little closer. So when our Mama dogs are expecting. Come here, sweetie. When our mama dogs are expecting, we pamper them, especially when they're getting much bigger. We pamper them. They sleep in bed with us. Look at that bunny. Probably in about five days we'll shave her belly fur so that um, the puppies can latch real easily. And it always breaks my heart to shave the long pretty fur. But Robin's grows back very quickly. And that's of course what's best for the babies and for her too. She had a bath last night. My husband, um, took the kids to family reunion for Labor Day weekend and I stay back with the dogs, of course. And um, so we had the house to ourselves and so Robin got a nice bath or like a shower, I guess. So she's, so her due date is the 13th, which is um, a week from today, a week from tomorrow, I'm day off, we're eight days out, so a week from tomorrow. Um, we're expecting six to eight. That's usually kind of give or take, um, just because like on x-ray, you don't know if you can see all of the, um, skeletons or if like they're overlapping, especially when you, you're getting into more than five or six, there's that many in there. Um, and then of course it's not uncommon to have so many puppies that there's just one that is um, so weak that it's just not going to make it. Um, and that just happens when they 
fertilized a lot of eggs and they produced a lot of the eggs that cycle and a lot of eggs stuck and um, the, the puppy carried to term she didn't lose it because they will sometimes lose puppies along the way and they'll reabsorb the products of conception. You love being pampered. You're such a good girl, Robin Dog. She's really my husband's dog. Daisy is my dog, and uh, Robin is really attached to Drew. She's super attached to Drew, so she's been kind of bummed with him being gone. So she's due on Tuesday the 13th. Um, she, I wouldn't expect her to go much over. Sorry, Drew's on his way home from the family reunion. Uh, they're driving all the way, they're driving like 500 something miles. Um, but anyway, um, so they're usually pretty, the vet is usually pretty spot on with the due dates. They're usually um, like a day over, maybe two days over. But um, he does a good job of dating them. You're such a good girl, Robin Dog. You're such a good girl. And then for those who don't know, we're going to live stream the delivery of her babies. Um, we're gonna, I think we're gonna use two cameras. We're gonna mount one, kind of like how I have this one right now. We're gonna just mount one um, separate and apart, just kind of looking into the whelping pen. And then um, we're gonna have another one that's handheld that if people want to view the one that is more up close and personal um that will be another option that you can choose and we'll label them as such but this last week we just pamper 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 we pick her up to put her on the bed and she's still, I try to stop her from jumping up on the bed because if she doesn't make it, she crashes on her belly. And um, so I try to keep her from jumping on and jumping off the bed and she still won't um, listen. And so I ordered um, some of the stairs, some of the doggy stairs. And those will be delivered tomorrow, so I'll have to, I'll pull the camera out and we'll get on a live stream and set those up and I'll show the, show you how, she, or I'll, I guess I'll um, uh, live stream teaching her, showing her how to use the stairs to our bed. What's up, Robin? What's up? Hold on. I'm texting Dad. <clears throat> Dad wants to know how you are. Yes, how is Robin Dog is doing? Yeah. You see Dad? You see Dad? You excited to see Dad? You excited to see Dad? Dad's on his way home. 
<laughs> Don't tip over. Don't tip over. Here, let's turn so that oh, <laughs> people can see you. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. You want to see dad? You want to see dad? You excited for dad to come home? You excited for dad to come home? Your big old belly. Your big old belly. Your big old belly. I'm gonna be so sad to shave this off, Robin Dog. I'm gonna be so sad. I'm gonna be so sad to shave that off. So pretty. of you who are not familiar with us, um, we started breeding Cavaliers after um, we had begun, we had been hunting for a responsibly bred Cavalier uh, for our children because they were grieving after the loss of our um, three-year-old son. <clears throat> and we found Cavaliers to be like the best breed recommended for that sort of thing. And we couldn't find any in rescues. We couldn't find any in shelters. Um, and then even a lot of the breeder listings turned out being mostly like shady backyard breeders with um, questionable breeding practices. And, um, so, uh, um, we did a lot of research and we ended up finding our Cavalier and she was really, really great. And we went into it with the thought in mind of, you know, if this breed is as great as it is, um, maybe we should consider starting to breed them because... <clears throat> Because there, we, as far as we could tell, there were no responsibly bred Cavaliers um, for reasonable prices that were healthy, or that were known to be healthy at least, um, that were raised, that were not just um, bred the litter whelp and put in a corner or the basement and mom raised the puppies we wanted we wanted to be breeders who raised our puppies and engaged with them and taught them um, how to be social how to play with people and we potty trained them um, um, sorry my husband <laughs> my husband <laughs> drew is on his way home so I keep getting updates about his drive um, and so that's kind of how we got into breeding. We couldn't really find a breeder that, um, we couldn't find a breeder, and, I mean, at least we're not for Cavaliers, um, that raised them in the way that we kind of envisioned. And so, I mean, um, Drew brought it up, um, during a live that he was on, um, but we always encourage rescues and shelters first. If you can find your your pet there, by like absolutely, 
go there. Um, but then, like, on the other side of that coin, um, you know, we want to stomp out puppy mills as much as everybody else does. Um, but as we do, somebody's, the, if we still want to have dogs, we need to, somebody's going to have to supply the well-bred dogs. And so that's kind of where we were coming in. And so we want to be those, we want to be the breeder that introduces well-socialized, well-trained, um, happy, healthy dogs into the gene pool into the into what is available and hopefully they never need to go into rescues and hopefully we never we don't need rescues one day that would be great yeah. but I think there's a uh, it's I think it says a lot that Cavaliers are difficult to find in rescues Because even like if something were to come up and family's not able to keep a cavalier, they're so adaptable that um, it's really easy for anyone to take them. They're good apartment dogs. They're good for like high rise living. They do well in smaller dwellings. Um, and they do great for such a variety of si like situations, like whether it's an elderly couple or somebody who like alone, like a uh, an elderly person who's alone and needs companionship, or if it's a family with a bunch of young kids. Um, they're really they're great for almost any any situation. Such a good girl, Robin Dog. And so we're expecting between six and eight puppies on Robin. Um, if you weren't on earlier, I was mentioning how it's always kind of it's kind of, some some vets won't even tell you what how how many they see on the X-ray. They'll just confirm the pregnancy or not um, because. They count, most of them count the skeletons and um, it can be so, it can be inaccurate because some can be hiding and uh, you just, you never know and it's just not a very reliable method. So our vet gives a range and then even from there it can be give or take, but it's usually within the range. Sweetie, mm -hmm. I know you want daddy to come home. You want daddy to come home. He's on his way home, huh? You're such a good girl, Robin Dog. You're such a good girl. really looking forward to um, whelping her litter on the live stream because um, like in between whelping puppies especially we'll be able to answer questions and talk about the different things we look for and things we do and things we have um, for emergencies um, 
and we've got some stories we can share about emergencies we've had in the past. Um, we're really excited. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think I think it will shed a lot of light on what makes like puppy mills and backyard breeders so dangerous because every every delivery needs to be attended for it to make sure it is safe to make sure that all the puppies and mom are safe She eats up every little ounce of pampering we give her. She is so funny. She's gonna love when Drew comes home because she's got him wrapped around her, her little paw. Especially when she is this pregnant and he's been gone for um, three nights now so he's been gone for three nights and she's in her last week of pregnancy so she's gonna be huge compared to when he saw her so I'm sure he's gonna be doing everything for her stirring her hand and foot he's sweet like that All of our moms have different little quirks about them when, uh, when it comes to parenting. And one little quirk that we've noticed between our different moms is like during the newborn period, there are different sort of priorities, I guess, when it comes to taking care of their babies. And um, our um, other two, so Missy and Daisy, are very meticulous about keeping their puppies clean. Robin, on the other hand, not so much. She just kind of lets them just make a mess and isn't so worried about cleaning them. So Drew and I have to um, wash them and keep them clean and make sure that they and it's not that it's like she takes care of them completely otherwise she keeps them warm and she's very protective of them but she just doesn't prioritize cleaning them and that's not to say she doesn't clean them because she does she just doesn't clean them nearly as meticulously as Robin or, or as uh, Missy and Daisy do so you have to kind of help her out there She's a really, really good mom otherwise. She's super sweet. Um, between the three of them, between Missy <clears throat> and Daisy and her, she plays with her puppies more than the other two do. Missy only really plays with them um, they, when they were old enough to go home. 
but Robin plays with them um, really when as soon as their eyes open and they're about they're old enough to engage with her when they're old enough to start they start crawling around up here and start crawling up here and so she'll she'll look down and kind of tease them I'm getting texted by all the, all the kids. I'm excited to come home. They've been gone for three days, and I don't remember the last time that the kids have been gone for that long. She's like a big barrel. She can't roll. Oh, we got Tootsie Roll. I'll call you Tootsie. Tootsie. Just like people, they are, they get uncomfortable in the pregnancy. That's why we really try to kind of pamper them. And even thinking about like puppy mills and backyard breeders, how pregnant moms are stuffed in basements and wire crates. Like I, I mean, we cradle them in the divot in our bed to help support their bellies. And so I just can't even imagine some of the conditions that moms are having to do this in. Yeah. You're so uncomfy, huh? So uncomfy. Oh, yeah. Better you'll never get old, so.
Monday. Happy Labor Day. I'm sorry. You should know that because that's why my family's not here. I'm such a good girl. I'm a dog. And, um, the delivery process. They start whelping. Their bellies are huge. And as each puppy is delivered, you can slowly see it deflate and people. Once they whelp the last puppy, it's close to their pre-pregnancy size. And within a couple of days, they're other than I mean, other than like the milk and stuff, they've like lost all their all their baby weight pretty much. How much their body. Um, how much it, how well it adapts, I guess. I mean, they've got a whole litter of puppies. They're stretching out way more than. Probably depends, I suppose. You're such a good girl, Robin. Um, so we're going to live when she whelps her puppies and then we'll just the live stream from there. We didn't live stream the litters when they were that young before because we didn't really think there was a lot to see. Um, but then upon talking to people we realized that to us it's not a lot to see because we're used to it, but that to other people it is like interesting so um that's why we decided to um live stream the delivery which i explained earlier we're gonna do in two ways um one is that we're gonna have a stationary camera just viewing the whelping pen that's just kind of viewing inside um and then we're gonna have a second stream that will be on a handheld camera It'll be a more up close and personal stream and so they'll be indicated as such on our channel so you know which one you're going into if it's going to be the um, general one or if it's going to be the more graphic one um, but we wanted to kind of give those options and then so after that then we'll just continue we'll attach the the feed the live stream um, to the whelping pen and then uh, from there, you'll you'll see us get up all throughout the night to help them nurse, teach them nurse, and if we have to supplement anybody with um, formula, um, you'll see how that's done. And if we have any tube feeders, this we had and when we had a tube feed last litter, um, but sometimes even if they don't have to be tube fed, but if they need to be supplemented will supplement by um, giving it while they're nursing and so that's just to keep them from um, just to kind of keep them in the habit of nursing and to keep those muscles strong She's such a good dog. you happen to be interested, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I 
you happen to be interested in a puppy from Robin, uh, all, um, all you have to do is go to our website, that's www.redbarncavaliers.com, and click on the Upcoming Litters tab, and at the very bottom of that page, there's a form to fill out that says, um, so something like add me to notifications or notify me or something something about notifying um fill out that form and it asks like what your preferences are color and gender and that sort of thing and we'll get back to you um in the next day or so Especially when they're the puppies, when we get up with them during the night and we're trying to get them settled, we'll be petting them like this, trying to get them sleeping. Unfortunately, I can't see comments, so 
in a live chat, so I apologize. I can't answer any questions, really. Um, we talked about how we got into breeding. Um, after we got Cavaliers for our children for the whole grieving process, we were really sad that we hadn't gotten, we hadn't discovered them sooner so that we could have gotten one for our handicapped son. Because there was a point where we had talked about possibly getting him um, either a service dog or like a companion dog sort of thing. Um, because he was so profoundly physically and intellectually disabled. Um, but we just thought that they would be too rambunctious. And we didn't know that Cavaliers existed and um, they would have been perfect for him. And so that made us kind of sad. But that's partly what fueled our desire to breed them because um, it was... If it wasn't for our own knowledge of puppy mills that we had from our own experiences, because um, like we worked with dog rescues, we were for foster home for rescue dogs, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, we would have been fooled into getting one from a backyard breeder. So um, we don't want other people to fall into the same trap, you know, because there needs to be people want to find. Um, a healthy, well-bred cavalier that's been raised to be a good pet and not just mated and grown up in a crate or a pet even. But so we're hoping that having the live stream up, because this will be, this will be the first time we have the live stream going so early, and so um, you'll get to see all the things that we do. And since we do it overnight now too, you'll see all the things we're doing through the night, and so you'll get a lot more insight into, um, I guess, the different types of care at the different ages that they require. I will admit I'm really excited to have little puppies in the house again. They're so sweet when they are like the size of hamsters and look like little rats with their tails. And the moms like Robin She's so sweet with her babies. It's just a, it's just an amazing process to watch like from a biological perspective. I don't know if you can really see her. She's like, uh, right before that, um, she's going to pop stage. I hate when we have to shave their fur. Each time we shave their belly fur, I try to do less and less. Especially when I'm with uh, our dogs that have the, the longer, heavier feathering, because it's, it's so pretty. I hate to shave it off. Wow, 
Robin is such an awesome dog. She's got all the wonderful things about a Cavalier, but she's also a man's dog, and so she's Drew's dog, really. She adores him over anyone else. Like, she's tolerating me right now, but if he was here, she would be in his lap. That's what's kind of awesome about um, our pack of dogs, our pack of breeding dogs, is that we have, um, right now we have eight total, and each of them has latched on to somebody in our house. Robin's latched on to Dad, Daisy's latched on to me. I could go down the whole list, but they all have a person. And I think I, I mentioned before that um, our kids, the Cavaliers that are for our kids, uh, they, they double as our breeding dogs, but they are our pets first. And um, but they serve as emotional support animals. Um, for those of you who weren't on when I was talking about it, when we first got Cavaliers, we were looking into them because we were, we were trying to help our children cope with the death of their three-year-old brother. And we had them in therapy and we were trying everything and we just couldn't, we couldn't reach, we couldn't reach them. And no matter what we did, and I was like, we're here for you, but they were like, we know, but it didn't help much. And so we looked into getting a dog and what kind of breed to get and What's amazing is I realize looking back now that the kids couldn't talk to us because they didn't know how to word what they were feeling. But now they have their dogs that can see their anxiety, can see their stress, and they crawl into their laps and snuggle them, and the kids don't have to express it. They don't have to put words to it. Their dogs just understand it and they comfort them and they meet them where they are and help them and the kids don't have to word it and um, try to communicate it to mom and dad. And, and so it's been, it's been an amazing process this last few years um, seeing what, what our dogs have done for our kids. Kind of expect that we'll have these two litters very close together because Robin will probably go a day or so over and Daisy will probably not quite make it the whole the whole time. It's kind of funny watching her try to roll over and sit up. 
It reminds me of trying to roll out of bed at nine months pregnant. It's kind of cool. There are just some interesting things that's happened as a breeding is that um, we've been very surprised at how mature our our 12 year old and our eight year old, especially our eight year old, our eight year old boy, just because he's so young, um, have handled like the realities of birth and um, complications, um, emergencies, because we've had a couple emergencies, and uh, so I've been very impressed, my jury's been really impressed too, with um, how well our, our, how much our kids learn from it and how much they seem to be growing and maturing. I can't wait to see Robin's puppies. They're going to be so cute. I'm always so curious when they're pregnant. I'm always so curious what they look like because their colors and their markings are already decided. They're already in there. And so I'm just dying to know what they look like and who's girls and who's boys. And Robin's puppies are pretty distinctly different from Daisy's puppies, pretty interestingly. Um, Robin's puppies are like these little plump fluff balls, and Daisy's puppies are these more slender, petite, really energetic um, puppies. They're not fluff balls, they're not like fluffy, they have this real sleek um, fur, or at least her other litter did, her first litter. But they look very different. Like their coats are very different, and their their but their the build of their bodies is pretty different. Not in any not in like a bad way or anything. Just different. And they're so cute in their own little ways. Um, one of her puppies on her first litter had a mohawk, and it was the cutest. It was so cute, and I think he still has it. It's probably getting so long that it's fallen down, but I know that um, his family did not clip it. They said they were never going to clip it, and all the pictures they ever sent me was still there. These are such I know, you're working so hard to grow on them babies. You're working so hard. Oh, and since we'll be live streaming earlier, you'll be able to see how we begin potty training. And you'll be able to see what we mean when we say that we have mom potty them over the pine. Um, we'll, we will make sure the camera is uh, situated in such a way that you can see all this stuff. Um, but once, once you see how that works, how mom potties them, It'll all make sense. And we whelp them uh, in our bedroom since we can keep it 
nice and dark and quiet uh, to help reduce stress on mom. So the live stream will be in our bedroom for that period of time. Just like in people, they get they get exhausted and worn out from having to carry all these this weight and stuff around. What's kind of nice is something we can monitor in our moms, especially if it's their first litter, is they start producing milk about halfway through their pregnancy, and so we can kind of gauge if they're a big producer or not. So not so big. Robin is a pretty big producer. Uh, Missy is not a big producer. And so we can tell that, well, when they're pregnant, we'll, we can tell, usually, based on how much milk they make, how fast. Um, it usually, it's just a trend that kind of continues after the litter is born. But, I mean, even with our moms that don't produce as much milk, we combat that with all kinds of stuff. We um, express milk, we just like, like with the breast milk, um, or hand express just by, just by going like that and squeezing it out. And then, um, then feed it to the puppies. And then that usually helps produce more. But during the live stream, when we're whelping the litters, hopefully um, that will um, that will provide a lot of opportunities to really talk about a lot of the different things you wouldn't really know. Things that I don't even, um, and that's why we would have to do it live um, during the whelping because Drew and I don't even think to mention um, different things because we're so used to it being normal that, um, uh, or not normal, but we're so used to just that, just, we're so used to it that we don't think to mention it that other people wouldn't, wouldn't just realize some of the more basic stuff, so. This is like the pregnant dog laying stances with the back feet kicked out. We only start doing this after the first pregnancy or during the first pregnancy. <laughs> butt scratch. Yeah, butt scratch. Oh, oh, how's the butt scratch? 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 Make that your girl. You know, I always think about how much my back hurt when I was pregnant, and I look at our dogs pregnant and can only imagine how much their backs have got to be killing them. 
no wonder that they get a little crabby at the end. What's up, sweetie? You want me to brush you? Robin loves to be brushed. Usually her daddy brushing her. Like I said, she'll settle for me. As soon as she hears dad walking in though, she's gonna wanna trade me in for him. Especially because he's been gone for three days. a good girl Robin dog. Who's a good girl? Do the other side. Help. It doesn't help. Alright, come here. Come here. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. I know you want more. I know you want more. You want more, don't you? You want more? Do you want more? Well, give me more. Other side though, sweetie. Other side. I know it's even here. Roll over that way.
instances. so cool that we can um, we can feel the babies moving when we hold her when we hold her long enough that's really crazy especially when a whole bunch of them are moving all at once it's kind of cool though because we can show the kids what it feels like for babies to move Also get morning sickness they get it actually really really bad we usually have to come up with creative ways to feed them because they have such little appetite that they'll start losing weight so um, that's another sort of interesting um, correlation I guess to human pregnancy 
that morning sickness can be dangerous. And going off of what I said about um, how they so quickly lose their baby weight if they have not been eating because of nausea or stomach upset um, then when they lose that baby weight all of a sudden it's really hard to um, bring them back around to get them to their pre-pregnancy weight and then a couple extra pounds since they're uh, nourishing a whole litter of puppies um, I remember with Daisy, she got so underweight because even after she delivered, she still didn't have an appetite. And we struggled, we gave her everything and she struggled to put on any weight. And so eventually we found some sort of trick and got her to eat. Um, and then she started putting on weight, but um, it just goes to show how important it is that you're vigilant and that you monitor and you know, like our pregnant dog sleepy supervised and needs to be attended. You're so pretty too. You're so pretty. Yes, you are. Yeah. She loves her belly rubs. Yes, yeah, she does. You love your belly rubs. in there. I'm gonna say eight. If we're still a week out. We still got a week to go. I'm gonna say eight. I'm gonna say eight. What do you think, Robin? Usually if they're kicking and um, moving around, if you can feel it, you can see it. And so if I can catch them moving, I can probably bring the camera over and show you. sleeping now.
Baiting me into belly rubs. Come here. Let's slide you over. There's a lot more belly to rub now, too. Do you need to go outside? Go All right, I think it's time for Robin to go outside. Time for bathroom break. All right, I'm gonna be ending the live stream since Robin is wants to go outside and go potty. Um, but I'll be, we'll be getting back on um, either later today or tomorrow. Um, since she's due a week from tomorrow, we're going to start a little countdown until D-Day. Right? Leave your fur down. All right, Robin. Come here. Come say goodbye. Say bye. Ready to go outside? Let's go outside. I'm such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Oh, you're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Oh. Ready to go outside? All right, hold on.